Let's open the scripture. I really enjoy the Lord. I just want to teach you something. Let's go, go to Exodus 23. Exodus 23. From verse 1. We can read going to 13, but we won't read all. Exodus. Exodus 23. From verse 1. Yes. You shall not give a false report. You shall not join hands with the wicked to be a malicious witness, promoting wrong and violence. You shall not follow a crowd to do something evil, nor shall you testify at a trial or in a dispute so as to side with a crowd in order to pervert justice. Nor shall you favor or be partial to a poor man in his dispute simply because he is poor. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey wandering off, you must bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying helpless under its load, you shall not leave the man to deal with it alone. You must help him release the animal from its burden. You shall not pervert, mean bend the justice due to your poor in dispute. Keep far away from a false charge or action and do not condemn to death the innocent or the righteous. For I will not justify and acquaint the guilty. You shall not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the testimony, the, the cause of the righteous. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the soul, the feeling, thoughts, and concern of a stranger, for you were stranger in Egypt." You shall sow your land six years and harvest its yield. But the seventeenth year, you shall let it rest and lie uncultivated, so that the poor among your people may eat what the land grows naturally. Whatever they leave, the animals of the field may eat. You shall do the same with your vineyard and olive grove. Six years, each week, you shall do your work, but on the seventh day, you shall stop working, so that your ox and your donkeys may settle down and rest, and the son of your female servant, as well as your stranger, may be refreshed. Now, concerning everything which I have said to you, be on your guard. Do not mention the name of other gods, either in a blessing or in a curse. Do not let such speech be heard coming from your mouth. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us to talk about a very serious issue today. Kenya Kore Rivule le Katabaye Mwe Butokwa Kudulikon. Just by God, you. Many problems we have here, they are coming from our mouth. If we can read from verse 1 to 3, you will see that here God was giving other laws. Do not have false Malicious witness. In other words, you must not promote what is wrong. God has a reason why he told the Israelites. This verse 3, 2, let me see 2. You shall not follow a crowd to do something evil. In other words, don't find your 
Because they are many. Because of what they are saying. If we are going to guard our mouth, we will check every word we speak. I want to tell you that I was asking God why we are failing this time. To change the mountains we are facing. And I was told that the words we are speaking fight by themselves. That's why today we must gather with them. And check what we are speaking. If we go to verse 13, which is important, read that verse again. It says 13. What? Now, concerning everything which I have said to you, be on guard. Do not mention the name of other gods, either in a blessing or in a curse. Do not let such speech be heard coming from your mouth. This is the time that we check what we say. We must be on guard. We need to be very careful that we must not just utter what will really backfire. We need to be sure of what we are speaking. I found this as very important. One time when I was reading Matthew 15 verse 11 I found that Jesus was speaking about it. It is not what goes out inside the mouth that defiles and dishonors. In other words, for you to be lifted, or for you to go down, is coming from your mouth. It's not what enters in your mouth. It what comes out of your mouth. Can you read that verse 11, Mama? It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that defiles and dishonors him. Uh -huh. But what comes out of the mouth, there's this defiles and dishonors him. Are you hearing that verse there? It shows that even Chauri, the level of your greatness is determined by what comes from your mouth. The issue of you falling down is not coming from witches and wizards. It's coming from the words you speak from your mouth. If you don't guard your mouth, you're bound to be everything. What I'm learning here is the man's mouth offer a direction of his life. Offer direction The lifestyle you want to live is coming from your mouth. You can define yourself and dishonor yourself or you cannot define yourself you honor yourself and God who sees what you speak from your mouth is the one who will lift you up. This is the time that we need to be silent. You know, I, I was learning that one of the best characters well, Jesus Christ is to be silent. Let me give you an example of what he did. Do you remember when he was approached by the people who were accusing a woman? He never rushed to answer. The Bible says he write down the Bible. And he got a revelation. Listen to this. It is important to look at the right before you answer. 
Wena so that you'll be free from the judgment of others. That's what Jesus was saying. That, that it's important not to rush to answer people. But to look at the writings. And you get revelation of what to say. We are rushing to speak things that backfire on us. Jesus was supposed to be stoned. Jesus was supposed to be stoned. But look what he did. He and the Bible says when they were pressing he ended up kneeling down This is the time that we develop a behavior of keeping quiet. I don't know if you're hearing I me. I can say Valento. Tell about develop a behavior. A character. Of keeping quiet. And, and God will work. God will really work. God will really work. Let me show you what Jesus did. From the scriptures. If we read Matthew 27. Matthew 27. From verse 11 to 14. 11 to 14. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ said. This was another behavior I love most. Can you read verse 11, Mama? Now Jesus stood before Pilate, uh -huh. the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of Jews? Uh -huh. In affirming, Jesus said to him, It is as you say. Mm. <coughs> Carry on. But when the charges were brought against him yes. by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But Jesus did not, did not reply him, not even to a single accusation, so that the governor was greatly astonished. The governor was astonished or amazed of the behavior he was seeing for the first time. He was expecting Jesus to defend himself, but Jesus remained silent. He kept quiet. You know, I was asking myself, why Jesus, why Jesus kept quiet when he was Pressurized like that. I mean, all of us we know we normally answer when we cannot tolerate. I believe it goes by how far do you tolerate and how far do you see? If you are able to tolerate, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you can keep silent. Even when it's pressure. You need to mind your words that you don't just speak because you want someone to back up your words. He will mind his words. He knows the one who back up his words. You cannot waste your words just to defend yourself when you know the defender. The Bible says he kept quiet. The Bible says that, you know, even the, the governor asked, Are you seeing these people, they are accusing? And Jesus was just like silent. You know, uh, this is another character we need to develop. If we want God to be involved, I don't know if you are hearing me. Just as I say, hey, develop this character. God will set you free. God will set you free. I don't know if you are hearing me. If, if we read the Bible in the book of Isaiah, 53 verse 7, 53, 7 you, you will see how Jesus was. This is the character we don't have. We normally cry and scream when we are pressurized. Jesus knew what would Jesus happen. happen. That's why he guarded his mouth. That is why I took him to Mulo. Isaiah 
He was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth to complain or defend himself. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. Like a sheep that is silent before its shadows. So he did not open his mouth. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, but he didn't open his mouth. You know, when I was reading uh, that, that chapter, I found that Jesus was not a handsome man. If you can read there, you will find it. He was not a handsome man, but he was tonic. To I mean, always facing attacks. Nadula attacki wa mitai. Always facing pains. Mitai na nadula kopana le butoko. And he was ready for that. And then I took a shake. Because the Bible says you can see the end. Na kono bana mafelo adi ilo. Not where he was. Isengwa le ngoho. He knew what will happen. Na tiboro todi alanga usali. Listen to this. The character of being silent. Mo huwa uhumola. It tells you that you know what will happen. Oh, but you know what the other one, what the other one, the other one. God is involved. How would you master the chit of being chow? Okay, when I move in, I don't know if you hear it. I get several the answers. The reasons why we fight ourselves and try to defend and speak for ourselves is because we know that we are not able to defend ourselves. It's because we know that we are not able to defend ourselves. It's because we know that we are not able to defend ourselves. But if we believe this God, we will understand that it's only God who will fight our battles. We will understand that it's only God who will fight our battles. I don't know if you're hearing me. Read that verse again, Mama. Verse seven. 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 Can you think about affliction? You know, one day the Bible says that the people who have not suffered to extend that they have lost their blood. This man, he got named. And the Bible says when he was, the nail was entering, he was saying, God forgive them. You know, if it was me, I was supposed to be saying, yes, I know. I will rise again. You Are you crazy? You will go to hell. Jesus was just saying, go for kids. They don't know what they are doing. He was contrary to anything he faced. I don't know if you're hearing me. If we reach a level where we become contrary to the pain, to the challenges, challenge, any problem we face, we will be more than the conquerors. The reasons why we are facing God and we fall and a reway. It's because we have not trusted that much. The world is supposed to be trusted. And we cannot seize that fact where God wants to take us. Let me see if truly is supposed to take us there. Let me see if truly is supposed to take us there. If we know where we are going, we will be silent about what devil has done right now. If you are hearing me say, I hear you. Let me see if you are hearing me say, I hear you. I understand why we speak a lot. We are trying to be people that will be understood by many. We want people to understand us. We want people to understand us, but what is it that they will help us with? Even those who want to understand us have got their own problems. Everyone has got his own problems. We are trying to make people to understand us so that they understand us. We are always trying to other people and we know the person who knows about our life. Time that you can see the hand of the living God. 
You know, always when we read Exodus 14, we don't seem to be understanding it. But let's read that verse today. Let's read. Exodus 14. Yes. Verse. From verse 1. Uh -huh. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, okay. Tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp in front of Pi Hiroth, between Migdol and the sea. Mm -hmm. You shall camp in front of Baal Zippon, yes. opposite it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden, make meaning make stubborn, defiant Pharaoh's heart, mm -hmm. so that he will pursue them. And I will be glorified and honored through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord. And they did so. Carry on. Listen to when that. the king of Egypt was told yeah. that the people had fled, yes. Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart toward the people. Yes. And they said, what is this that we have done? We have let Israel go from saving us. So Pharaoh harnessed horses to his war chariots mm -hmm. for battle and took his army with him. And he took 600 chosen war chariots and all the other war chariots of Egypt with fighting charioties over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, yes. king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites as they were living confidently and defiantly. Yes. The Egyptians chased them with all the horses and war chariots yes. of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army. And they overtook them as they camped by the sea beside Pai Iroth in front of Baal Sipon. Pharaoh, as Pharaoh approached, mm. the Israelites looked up and saw the Egyptians marching after them. Mm. And they were very frightened. So the Israelites cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, it is because there, were, there are no graves in Egypt, that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What is this that you have done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians oh as slaves than to die in the wilderness. Then Moses said to the people, do not, be afraid. Do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For these Egyptians whom you see, you, whom you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. Did you hear that? You Amen. all have your Egyptians who are following you. Listen to mm. these Egyptians are people who don't know God. People of the world that devil is using against you. They are always there around you. Devil will use them. Satan but God will allow it. They will follow you. And follow you. To make you slaves. So that you must not live your life. But don't forget God is having a plan for you. If you are out. And now you are saved. Already you are in a road. To go to Canaan. 
I don't know if you are hearing me. You are out already from there. You are no longer ruled by the system of Egypt. You are led by God. On the road. Though there's something like nothing on the road. Though it looks like there is desert. Like nothing is happening. But you are going there. So God here was teaching us that though we have the or enemy, that enemy we cannot stop him by talking. We cannot stop that enemy by complaining. When mm. we remain still, what is the meaning of remaining still? Is to keep quiet. We need to keep quiet. Because we know the power of the living God. You need to keep quiet and stop complaining if you know the power of God. Where you are working, you need to keep quiet. You need to keep quiet and remain silent because you know the power of God. Where you are doing business, you need to keep quiet. Remain silent. It's then your God will fight your battles. He wants to fight for you. Don't be afraid when you see them coming. Don't be afraid when they look like they are pressurizing you. Don't complain because God is aware. As you are seeing them, soon you will never see them again. Come open your mouth with fear. Stand your ground. Be confident in your God. Listen, your victory is there in your mouth. Your victory is there in your mouth. When you are silent, you are shaking the foundation of the enemy. I don't know if you are hearing me. Pastor say, my friend, when you are silent, the enemy cannot do anything. They can approach you one way, but they will run away seven ways. I said they will approach you one way, but they will be divided soon. You need to remain silent. You are making mistake of talking too much. You are making mistake. I want to tell you why when you are working why the supervisor, the manager, why is oppressing you? Because he's afraid of you. When you are quiet, that supervisor was told about you. That you are dangerous. You are the one to take over. So when you are silent, whatever he's doing, when he's doing on you, it adds more fear to him. So you are silent and you are silent and you are silent and you are silent. You are already overcome. I don't know if you are hearing me. Pastor said you must shut up your mouth and allow God to work. You are see a challenge, but be silenced. You are see sickness, but be silenced. Soon that pain will fall down. I don't know if you are hearing me. I remember when in Joshua chapter one, from verse eight there. Verse eight, mola. Yeah, maybe we can read 9 today. Let's read 9. Let's read 9. Let's read 8 and 9. Okay. Chapter 1, 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Uh -huh. This book of the law yes. shall not depart from your mouth. Okay, listen. It didn't say this challenge. I already challenge it. It didn't say this problem. I are matata. It said this book of the law. law. This verses. Verse the ye. word of God. Not your challenge. Not your trouble. Not your shame. Not your, not your, trouble. Trouble. Not your, not your shame. Not your leg. This book Muka of the law. Can you just read? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Uh -huh. But you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance. Sorry, to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. Yes. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be terrified or dismayed, meaning intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do not be terrified. The Lord your God is with you. In other words, Hallelujah. don't speak about the terror. Don't speak about what you are facing. Don't speak about the challenge. He's, He's away. away. I say, He's away. He's with you. Listen to this. We normally spend time talking about challenges, even talking about other people. We are making mistakes. We have the word of God. We have got revelation that can make us to see beyond our challenges. We are failing on our challenges but we are talking about the challenges of others. We are supposed to be solving the problems of others by overcoming our own when we understand what the Bible says. I found that when God to do something. You have to touch your mouth. In Jeremiah 1 verse 9. Jeremiah Let's 1 read 9. that verse. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched the mouth of the Lord of the Lord said to him, to me. Read it again very well. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. Uh -huh. And the Lord said to me, Behold, hear me. I have put my words in your mouth. Oh my God. Jeremiah was a prophet. Jeremiah now you can see a prophet to prophesy. God must touch his mouth. God must touch his head. He must touch his mouth. Touch his mouth. Touch his mouth. And the ways that is it is no longer his own ways. Uh, listen to this. Your destiny is in your mouth. When the Lord touches your mouth. I understand when the Bible says, Open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. Why? Because everything is all about your mouth. Your mouth. When your mouth is small, it's small. You see, when your mouth, God, God wants to open your mouth. So all about you is all about your mouth. Open your mouth. Wide. I will touch it. I will feel it. And I will bless you. And I get so same applies to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, you are not a prophet. Jeremiah, also be until I touch your mouth. You are not a rich man. Until, until I touch your mouth. Listen, whatever, if you don't touch your mouth, you won't have money. You, even if you can have money, you won't eat what is good. So God have to touch your mouth to determine your destiny. Your destiny is in your mouth. Tell about your your destiny is in your mouth. Can you tell your destiny is in your mouth? Guard your mouth. You must be careful of what you say. You know, uh, uh, the boys that I'm playing soccer with, uh, they came to me one day and said, why, is, I mean, with us two but years. you are always quiet. Still the arguments is so bad. Because there are fouls and mistakes. But you are always quiet. I don't want to waste my energy. I don't want to waste my energy. I'm here to play soccer. You hear what I'm trying to say? I, I told one of them, I said, you know yeah, what? Uh, me, when I'm talking, and I see you talking, talking like you want to fight, but at the end, you don't fight. I don't, I don't want to play with my emotions. You, you talk like you want to fight. What is stopping you not to fight? I say, I won't do that. The day I talk like I'm going to fight, I will fight. I don't pretend. But you that pretend us, 
But at the end, what stops you? Look at the wasted energy. I don't know if you're hearing me. Sometimes we are wasting our energy. You're just talking things that you know does not lead to anything. Anyway, I say, me, I cannot waste my energy because I know that I'm not here because this is my profession. I'm here, I'm still helping my soul and my time is not so far. You will know your time is to be. That's why you're still playing because of me. My time is small. So I cannot just talk. 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 Defiling myself the things which are useless. Can you tell your neighbor, say, my friend, what is it that you talk most? Can you just ask your neighbor? You'll find that you are, you are talking zero. At the end of the day, what is it that you came after the talk? You're talking about someone after that. How much do you get? Ask your neighbor, say, I'm not here to talk to you. 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 What is it that you get? You're wasting energy. This is the time that we need to stand our grounds. And we do things that edify ourselves. I don't know if you're hearing me. Your ways is then tomorrow when you say, Let this mountain move, it will move. But presently, you are still shaking because everything that comes to your mind is what you say. It cannot be directed by the word of God, it cannot be directed by the spirit of the living God. It is time to guard your mouth. I was told the reasons why many Christians here are. I heard that your mouth, your mouth, is talking too much. It's full of words, and God cannot bless it. Open it, open. Open it, open. Make it open. And speak the word. And God will create miracles. Blessings will follow you. Success will be your portion. Let me show you another scripture. In Colossians 3 verse 8. Just read there. Colossians 3 verse 8. Verse 8. But now read yourselves completely of all these things. Yeah. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene, abusive, filthy, vulgar languages from your mouth. Did you hear that? Amen. Uh -huh. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off your old self with its evil practices. Can you hear that? Amen. In other words, now when you're a new creature, there are things you must get rid of there. You cannot lie again. You cannot be angry again. I say you cannot be angry again. Tell you, but you cannot be angry again. Sometimes Angry to extend. Yes. That they don't eat uh, hey, about level, they don't eat porridge. I'm angry today. I don't even want to eat porridge. I'm angry. Porridge is no longer uh, tasting good to me. People can be angry. And they speak things that you can be shy, amazed when you hear. They, they forget that they're Christians. You are about to be challenged so that you say something wrong. I was speaking with Freddy. Where is Freddy? Where is Freddy? Where is Freddy? Uh, Freddy, you remember the answer I gave you? Uh, Freddy was asking me. He said, but why? are doing these things to you. Can you just give uh, Freddie Mike what I answered to him? What, what I said to Freddie? Uh, Freddie, uh, Freddie, 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 Freddie,
I said what Freddy said that he said the devil doesn't know what to do anymore except to do that. Satan has a tiburadie. Satan has a tiburadie. Except to do that. Can't tell the Jonache. You know, the devil doesn't know what to do anymore. Satan has a tiburadie. How to go to Chilean? The devil will never know what to do anymore. Satan has a tiburadie. He just turn around and find oh, no, weak people around you. And use them against you. You can be insulted by someone you trust most. You love hey, most. You can be insulted by someone you can be insulted by someone you trust most. You can be insulted by someone you trust most. You can be insulted by someone you can be disappointed by someone. The devil does not know what you trust anymore. You have to get someone you love most to challenge you. So check your way. 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 Check He doesn't know what to do. Can I tell you this? This week you will meet a temptation. You, you find the devil does not know what to do. He knows the blessings are around the corner. Success is around the corner. He knows, he knows that God has opened your mouth. And the blessings are coming. The people you love most. They are about to hurt you. Keep silent. Like you didn't see anything. Keep silent. You will see what God will do for you. Victory will be your portion. As a victory will be your portion. Tell them as a guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. Say guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. You know what the Bible says? In Isaiah 54 verse 17. Let's read that verse. Maybe it's Are you ready, man? Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon yeah. that is formed against you will succeed. He says, every tongue. Every tongue. Every tongue that, rise, that will rise that rises against you in judgment you will condemn. How will you condemn? You will keep quiet. It says this peace righteousness security and triumph of our opposition is the heritage. You will hold your peace. Righteousness. Security. And triumph over your will enemy. Will be your heritage. This is the time. You know that you are more than the conqueror. If you are hearing me say I hear you. If you people can guard your mouth. When you blow with your mouth. The power will come out. When you breathe. When you breathe. Anointing will breathe. When you talk, anointing will talk. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways you speak. If you want to be something, check the ways the character is not yet fulfilled. If God can deal with you, and you will be you are able to deal with your mouth, you will hear things that others cannot hear. You will hear things that others are not hearing. You will see things that others are not seeing. You will reach where others cannot reach. I don't know if you're hearing me. Guard your mouth. <laughs> your mouth is not for eating only. It's holding your destiny. Your mouth is holding your destiny. If you want to go far, check your mouth. 
is not for red lips only. It's not for decorating only. That is why your mouth is at the front, not at the back. Your mouth is showing where you are going. Your mouth is showing where you are going. It's good. <laughs> It's good to have a big mouth. <laughs> it's showing you that where you're going is big. <laughs> when you happen to reach the place, the mouth has reached already. <laughs> Check your mouth. <laughs> your mouth is very important <laughs> in your own life. <laughs> Stop saying people as bewitched. <laughs> you have been bewitched <laughs> by your own mouth because your mouth is a witch. <laughs> your own mouth is a witch. Your mouth is an angel. Your mouth is an angel. If you want to be something, check your mouth first. Tell the person that is close to you, just check your mouth. Hey. And stop speaking about us. Look at your own mouth. Stop taking up your mouth doing it for others. It's time that your mouth must work so that you go forward. You are going to prosper. You are going to prosper. Big things that will make you prosper, you prosper. Big things that will make you victorious, you be victorious. Big, big things that will make you to go forward, you go forward. Your mouth is important. There are things that God can never agree you to eat them with your mouth because your mouth speaks everything. If you can be able to put your mouth in order, God will make your mouth to taste things that others cannot taste. You will eat the good of the day. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? 